Let's try to solve subarray division. It's another C++ coding challenge. And I think I had something similar on my channel in the past and you guys didn't really get it. So I'll try and be very specific in this one and give you proper examples. We have two kids, Lily and Ron, and they want to share a chocolate bar. So if you look at the examples, this is an example here for a chocolate bar. And this is another chocolate bar. Each of the squares has a number, one, two, one, three, two. And this one has only ones. So one of them wants to share the bar in contiguous segments. And there are two conditions. The length of the segment matches Ron's birth month. And the sum of the integers on the squares is equal to his birthday. We have to determine in how many ways can she divide the chocolates. So here they have S. If S represents a chocolate bar, meaning it has five squares and it's a single row, the first square has two, second one has two, third one has one, fourth one has three, and the last one has number two. The day for Ron's birthday is four and the month is two. So now we need to find the segments summing up to Ron's birthday, meaning that when we traverse the squares of the chocolates, we need to sum up the values in the squares up until we reach the total or the amounts for D, which is four. And the length has to equal the month, which is two, meaning that we need to find two contiguous squares on the bar of chocolates, which values amount to two when you sum them up. What we can do is start at index zero. We grab the value here and we sum up that value with the one from the next square because we need a contiguous segment. So here we get one plus two, which is three, but we also need to keep track of the number of squares that we are summing up. So to be specific here in this example, the month is two, so M is two, and the value that we need to get after summing up is D, which is three. So we start at index zero, we get one, we sum it up with the next square, which is two, we get one plus two, which is three. At this point, we also need to keep track of the number of squares that we are summing up. This is square one, square two, meaning we now have M squares. Once we reach M squares, we need to check if the sum of the values in those squares equals D, which is three in this case. If yes, then we need to deduct the value from the first square so that we can do two plus one here. Then we check again, we have M squares now, which is index one and index two. The sum is also three, which is for D. So now we need to deduct the value from index one, which is two here, so that we can do one plus three now. We have M squares again, because we need to consider only two squares. Do we have D? No, we don't, because one plus three is four. So we deduct one here. Now we only have three, we need to do three, plus two, we have M squares now. We need to check if the sum is D. So three plus two is five, it's not three. So we deduct three here. We only have the last square. We have nothing else to add up to, so that is the end. Another example is here. If M is two again, and D is three, we start at index zero, we have one. We add one plus the next square, which is also one. We now have M squares, which is two. But one plus one equals two, not three. So we deduct one, we check again, one plus the next one, we have M squares. But the thing is we need to return zero in this case because we can get the sum three with squares that only have the value one. So in this case, we return zero because there are no ways in which we can match the criteria. But for sample one, we have to return two because there are two ways in which we can meet the criteria. By summing up index zero and index one, and also by summing up index one and index two. So everything I just explained is what you see here in my solution. The name of the function here is birthday. It takes the list here. This would be the chocolates. If you scroll up, they say here that we have um, D and M, which is for the birthday and the month. And we have the chocolates values here, which is in this vector S. So I can now loop through my vector. You can think of this as moving square by square on the chocolate bar. And at every iteration, I'm going to increment my counter variable. Counter keeps track of how many squares of my chocolate bar that I'm considering when I'm summing up the values. Anytime I move through my squares, I need to compute my sum. 
then I need to check as well, do I have m squares? If I have m squares, then that is when I need to check if my sum is equal to d. In other words, if I can use m squares to get the value of d. If I can, then that counts as one valid way to meet the criteria. And when this happens, I need to decrement my counter because I need to remove the square that is the most at my left when I'm considering it. And I also need to deduct its value. So to deduct the value, you can use this i minus m plus one. Let's say I'm at index three here and I want to deduct the value from index two. Well, index three here is i. If I do i minus m, m is two. So I have three minus two, that is one plus one, and I get two here. And when I'm done, I simply return valid. This means how many ways can I meet the criteria? And that's it for this entire coding challenge. I can submit it right away and we've passed all the test cases. So that's it for subarray division. If you like my solution in C++ and you want more coding challenge videos from HackerRank, please subscribe and I'll catch you next time.